Hi, it's Katrina. Giant creatures have been roaming the Earth for millions of years, but what about spiders? Not surprisingly, Australia was home to giant spiders even in prehistoric times. Hi, it's Katrina. The Trapdoor Spider Let's get into yet another reason why you'll never want to visit Australia. Just kidding, I actually do. Scientists recently found the fossil of a giant trapdoor spider. Leave it to the Australians to find the creepiest fossil ever. The discovery came during an expedition to McGrath's Flat in New South Wales, a region of grassland known for its immense fossil deposits. Researchers found proof of an abundant rainforest that thrived 16 million years ago during the Miocene era. There were thousands of specimens uncovered, including examples of massive wasps, freaky plants, huge cicadas, and of course, the enormous trapdoor spider. 16 million years ago, Australia was a much different place. McGrath's Flat was a lush rainforest, one that was dominated by giant bugs. This particular trapdoor spider is the first fossil of its kind found anywhere in the world. It's also only the fourth spider fossil ever discovered in Australia. That should give you some idea of how rare discovering fossilized spiders is. Scientists have a tough time piecing together spider evolution because their fossils are so rare. But just how big was this spider? That's the question everyone wants answered. With its legs spread out, scientists say the spider could have snuggled gently into the palm of your hand. It wasn't big enough to bite your head off or string you up in a web, but it was still bigger than most spiders you find in your house today. Researchers named the new spider Mega Mamum Blah Blah, and its closest living relative is a much smaller version that lives in the moist jungles of Singapore and Papua New Guinea. And now for number nine, but first, it's shout out time! I want to give a big thank you to Cosmos Guelph and Christopher Henshaw for supporting this channel. Be sure to subscribe if you haven't already for more videos about amazing discoveries. Dinosaurs or creatures, we've got it all. The Super Salamander There was once a salamander that grew to be the size of a car. A slimy salamander just like the kind you find hiding underneath wet logs in the woods. Only it was as big as the vehicle you drive to work. Not only was it huge, but it was also ferocious. Researchers believe that the super salamander behaved more like a crocodile than a modern-day salamander. It could have eaten you whole! The super salamander's fossils were uncovered in southern Portugal, and they were dated at roughly 200 million years old. It grew over 6 feet long and likely lurked on the bottoms of lakes and rivers. A team of scientists from the University of Edinburgh in Scotland was behind the discovery. They think the super salamander belonged to a group of primitive yet massive amphibians that were widespread across the globe. They also think the super salamander could be the oldest known ancestor of all modern amphibians. 200 million years ago was around the time that dinosaurs began to take over the world. But nobody knows if the dinos ate all the enormous salamanders. They don't even know when they may have gone extinct. However, researchers did mention that the salamanders may have preyed on dinosaurs. Since they were aquatic and as deadly as any large crocodile, they could have snatched animals from the edges of rivers and lakes. Giant Wombats Wombats are either super cute or creepy oversized rat bunnies. It all depends on who you ask. 15 million years ago, there was a giant marsupial known as Nimbodon. It was the largest tree-dwelling mammal that ever lived in Australia, like a bear-sized version of a modern wombat. It weighed a whopping 154 pounds and had more in common physically with a sun bear than a wombat. Sun bears are notorious for climbing trees and hanging out in forest canopies in Southeast Asia. The discovery of Nimbodon was made in 1993. At the time, scientists thought they were dealing with a massive marsupial that foraged for food on the forest floor. But when researchers took a more recent look at a complete skeleton, they realized they'd been wrong. The giant marsupial had a pouch, massively strong arms, and opposable thumbs. It was a specialized climber with a completely different lifestyle than its closest living relative. Modern wombats live underground in burrows, so you won't catch them messing with the trees. But Nimbodon lounged in the branches. It was slow and lazy like a sloth. The giant wombat was certainly a strange animal, 
but it was at home in prehistoric Australia alongside other, far more unusual creatures. There were giant snakes and carnivorous marsupials the size of lions. There were crocodiles that could climb trees and kangaroos that feasted on flesh. There was also a platypus that had huge teeth. The Worm of Arrakis Scientists recently named a newly discovered worm after the terrifying creatures from the movie Dune. A sea animal that lived 500 million years ago is now called Shaihuludia shurikeni, and its name was inspired by the sandworms of Arrakis. It was discovered fossilized in the Spence Shale, which is located on the border of Idaho and Utah. Scientists say it's a type of annelid, a segmented worm covered in stiff bristles that looks kind of like Japanese throwing stars. That's where the worm gets the other half of its name from, shurikeni from the Japanese shuriken. The Spence Shale has been an exceptional source for unusual fossils since it was first found in the 1900s. An abundance of trilobites has been found here, truly ancient marine animals that looked like giant woodlice. S. shurikeni is an entirely new species, but it wasn't nearly as horrifying as the sandworms from Dune. It was tiny and most closely related to living annelid worms like leeches and earthworms. All annelid worms have similar features. They're long, slimy, and made in segments. But although they are similar, they do range dramatically in size. Out of the 22,000 known specimens alive today, the smallest is microscopic and the biggest is 22 feet long. Cambro raster A new species of creepy marine creature was recently found in Canada. It's called Cambro raster falcatus, and it lived an astounding 506 million years ago. Its fossil was discovered in the Burgess Shale of the Rocky Mountains by paleontologists at the Royal Ontario Museum and the creature was unlike anything alive today. It's difficult to know where to even start describing such an unusual specimen. It had claws that kind of resembled rakes sticking out from the bottom of its body. Its mouth was shaped like a pineapple and was positioned at the front of its bulbous head. It was also covered by what looked like an armor shell with strange frilly features that helped propel it through the water. It was one of the first large predators that ever evolved on this planet, and it's considered the earliest relative of all living insects, spiders, and crabs. Hold on to your socks, though, because this thing was big. It reached a foot in length. Sure, the blue whale can grow 100 feet long, but the blue whale didn't live half a billion years ago. According to Joe Moisuk from the museum, most living animals during the Cambrian period were smaller than the average person's pinky finger. That means Cambro raster was a living giant. It was one of the first big predators, with nothing else alive at the time that could eat it. Cambro raster likely used its rake-like claws to scrape through sediment, feasting on buried prey. The dinosaur with bat wings in northeastern China, a farmer found the complete skeleton of one of the weirdest flying animals to ever take to the skies. It was a dinosaur with bat wings, a truly unique specimen from 163 million years ago. The study was conducted by scientists with the Chinese Academy of Sciences, and surprisingly, it's the second example found of a dinosaur with bat-like wings. The other specimen was found 50 miles away, so these creatures may have been unique to China. Both specimens belong to the same group, and they were small dinosaurs that could fly. These creatures shouldn't be confused with flying reptiles from the dinosaur age like pterodactyls. They are their own kind of thing. They are their own kind of thing, estimated to have been the size of a blue jay but with a strange mix of features. They would have climbed trees like squirrels, but flew between branches like sugar gliders. Only they weren't as cute as sugar gliders. Instead, they looked more like bat dinosaurs covered in feathers. Julia Clark from the University of Texas said the fossil proves that dinosaurs did take flight. They did it multiple times throughout their history and in a bizarre variety of ways. The new species is named Ambopteryx longibranchus. It's not a super creative name, but translated from Latin, it means both wings, long upper arm. In fact, it's about as boring of a name as you could give to a bat-like dinosaur. What would you have named the creepy prehistoric critter instead? Let me know in the comments below. And while you're at it, be sure to subscribe.
Thingodonta. About 23 million years ago, there was a creature so strange that scientists named it Thing. Thingodonta is one of the weirdest marsupials that ever existed. Scientists don't know how it lived or what it ate because it has so many conflicting features. They can't even look at its closest living relatives for clues because they don't know if it has any. The only thing scientists really know is that Thingodonta lived in the rainforest of prehistoric Australia, and it likely existed alongside the terrifying trapdoor spider I told you about earlier. The unusual shape of its teeth has led some experts to hypothesize it primarily ate caterpillars. Then again, it may have sustained itself on a diet of eggs. The only fossils of Thingodonta have been found in northwestern Queensland. Researchers uncovered a skull, a few jaws, and a lot of teeth. In most cases, teeth are enough to recreate an entire animal from tail to snout, but not this time. Scientists believe that Thingodonta is the only example of an extinct order of Australian marsupials. There isn't anything like it that's existed anywhere else in the world or at any other time. Parasitoid wasps Scientists studied 1,500 fly pupae fossilized between 66 and 23 million years ago, and they were shocked to find 55 fossilized wasp larvae inside the fly pupae. The discovery is proof that parasitic wasps were around after the extinction of the dinosaurs. These terrifying bugs are called endoparasitoid wasps, and they were notorious for laying their eggs inside a host to incubate. They inject the pupae of other insects with their own larvae, and then the wasp larvae hatch from the host's body. It's the exact same thing as the xenomorphs in the Alien franchise. These wasps are the real-life versions of chest bursters, gestating inside a host and then exploding out of them when born. These kinds of wasps are alive today, but thanks to this discovery, scientists now know they've existed for millions of years. So it's clearly a successful survival tactic, although really creepy. The fly pupae were excavated in France at the end of the 19th century. A whole heap of them were then stashed at museums and were forgotten about by scientists. It wasn't until 2016 that Thomas van de Kamp from Germany started studying them. When he x-rayed the fossilized pupae, he started finding parasitoid wasps. Out of the 55 specimens were four unique species, and one of them was named Xenomorphia resurrecta after the alien movies, the funky worm amphibian. Paleontologists at Virginia Tech just named a creepy new worm amphibian after a funk song from the 1970s. The new creature is called Funcus vermis gilmore, and its name is based on Funky Worm, a popular tune from 1972. But just what is this funky worm creature? It's a type of Sicilian, one of the creepiest amphibians that ever lived. It had a lot of teeth but no limbs, using its worm-like body to slither around beneath the dirt. It was a subterranean amphibian that behaved a lot more like a slippery worm when it was alive 220 million years ago. There are two main types of living amphibians today. There are frogs and salamanders, then there are limbless, worm-like Sicilians. They have skulls shaped like bullets that help them burrow, and they are found exclusively in four parts of the world. They live in South and Central America, Africa, and Asia, but most people never see them since they spend their whole lives underground. Up until this recent discovery, there were only 10 fossilized Sicilian specimens in the world, with the oldest being from 183 million years ago. DNA tests have shown that they likely evolved 370 million years ago. The issue is that finding their fossils is nearly impossible. They are usually only discovered by accident while looking for other fossilized creatures. The funky worm was excavated in Arizona and was identified by Ben Kligman at Virginia Tech. It's now the oldest example of such a creature on record. Being so much older than modern Sicilians, it did have some big differences. The funky worm didn't have the same adaptations for burrowing, meaning it likely hadn't evolved to live underground yet. But it was still slimy and weird, likely slipping through foliage on forest floors and munching on bugs. Number 1. Proto-Spiders 
Fossil hunters have discovered the preserved remains of an arachnid from 100 million years ago. This arachnid is unlike anything you've ever seen before. It was a spider with a tail, and its tail was longer than its body. Just be thankful these things don't still exist today because they were way worse than ordinary spiders. They still had eight legs and too many eyes, and they still looked like creepy spiders with fangs. But they also had super long tails. The specimen wasn't found fossilized, but rather suspended in a chunk of amber discovered in Myanmar. Finding a creature preserved in a chunk of ancient sap is way better than just the fossilized bones since you can see what the specimen really looked like. The spider produced silk, had two feelers called pedipalps, and of course, a tail. But until now, tails were only found on ancient spider relatives known as uraranids. It's believed this could be the only arachnid that grew a tail. Paul Selden from the University of Kansas called it a missing link between primitive uraranids and modern arachnids. But here's the part that's really going to freak out arachnophobes. Paul said there's a slim chance that descendants of long-tailed spiders are still alive today. And if they are still alive, they live somewhere deep in the jungles of Southeast Asia. Scientists have never found one, but Paul insists that they could be around. Thanks for watching. Be sure to stay tuned for extra content you might have missed. Ornamental Baboon Tarantula The ornamental baboon tarantula is native to West Africa and mainly found in the areas of Togo and Ghana. Once these spiders are fully grown, which tends to take about three years, they can reach a leg span of about five inches. These spiders are characterized by their chalky white coloration with mottled black and brown markings. These tarantulas have very thick rear legs and like to hide in trees where they can be camouflaged. These spiders can be aggressive and have very strong venom. In fact, they are believed to have one of the most potent venom of all tarantulas. They do not have urticating hairs like other tarantulas, so their bite is their only form of defense. While their venom is probably not enough to kill anyone, I don't recommend you handling it. Yellow Sack Spider Yellow sack spiders come in many species and are common throughout the US, Mexico, and South America. A few species can also be found almost everywhere in the world. They're pretty small, measuring between 3 to 15 millimeters long, and are known to frequently make their way into people's homes. They are a defensive spider that lives in gardens in the summer and goes indoors when it gets cold, so you might be surprised one day when you least expect it. The bite is said to feel like a wasp sting. Best case scenario, the spider's venom causes a small red welt, which is unpleasant but tolerable. If the wound is more serious or becomes infected, symptoms like nausea, headache, dizziness, and fever may set in. Even in more severe cases like this, there's no reason to panic, because in most instances, the discomfort eventually subsides with no long-term damage. The yellow sack spider's venom contains cytotoxin, which means necrosis or rotting of the skin tissue can occur. In the most extreme cases, bites can lead to anaphylactic shock. Yellow sack spider bites are often diagnosed as brown recluse spider bites, but the latter's venom is much more potent and dangerous. On the other hand, many people experience few or no symptoms beyond mild discomfort. An encounter with one of these spiders is more likely during early summer, when they have an increased presence due to mating season. It's common for people to accidentally bother one while gardening or playing outside, and taking common sense measures like inspecting shoes and clothing for unwanted visitors can prevent a bite. Black Widow Spider The Black Widow genus of spiders consists of several species who carry a trademark hourglass-shaped mark on their backs and are notorious for their neurotoxin-infused venom. They dwell in temperate regions throughout the world, and apparently they like the same places where grapes usually grow. Black Widow venom is reportedly 15 times more potent than that of a rattlesnake. It overloads neurons and affects the connections between nerve cells, resulting in a condition called latrodectism. Bites are accompanied by excruciating side effects, including nausea, muscle aches, sweating, vomiting, and difficulty breathing caused by paralysis of the diaphragm. Despite their deadly reputation, black widow bites rarely cause severe harm, let alone death. Those greatest at risk for severe symptoms or worse are children, the elderly, and people with weak immune systems. Fatalities can also occur due to cardiovascular complications resulting from hypertension. 
Black widows are non-aggressive and typically only bite out of self-defense. Many bites result from accidental contact, such as unknowingly sitting on one or cleaning dusty corners in your house. Brazilian Wandering Spider Also called armed spiders or banana spiders, Brazilian wandering spiders come in eight different species, all of which are found in Brazil, while some also occur in other parts of Latin America. They reach up to two inches long with a leg span of up to six inches and are hairy and mostly brown. These nocturnal hunters spend their days hiding in crevices and under logs. Their menu consists of other spiders, insects, and even small amphibians, mice, and reptiles. Brazilian wandering spiders appear aggressive because of their defensive posture, which involves raising their first two pairs of legs, making themselves look bigger. But this behavior is more of a warning than a threat. It means the spider feels intimidated and is giving you one last chance to make yourself scarce before it resorts to plan B and bites you. The creature's potent venom attacks the victim's neuromuscular system, causing initial symptoms such as sweating, goosebumps, and burning pain. Within a half hour, side effects can escalate to high or low blood pressure, an elevated or decreased heart rate, nausea, hypothermia, blurred vision, vertigo, convulsions, and even shock. Bites are rare and bite victims typically survive as the spider only injects venom in about one third of bites. However, that doesn't mean that it doesn't hurt. Men need to watch out because the bite can deliver a long and painful erection. But because of this, several studies have looked at using this venom for erectile dysfunction drugs. As of 2008, there were only 10 recorded deaths in Brazil from the Brazilian wandering spider's bite. Just the same, experts encourage people to seek immediate medical treatment if they suspect they've been bitten by one. After all, better safe than sorry. Over the last few years, Brazilian wandering spiders have made their way to other parts of the world in shipments of bananas. So, although you might not expect to ever come across a Brazilian wandering spider in your lifetime, that doesn't mean that they can't make their way to your local grocery store. Brown Widow Spider The brown widow spider was first described based on a specimen discovered in South America, but the species is thought to have evolved in Africa. It exists in other parts of the world, such as Southern California, Hawaii, Florida, the Caribbean, Japan, Cyprus, and Australia as an invasive species. This tropical and subtropical species only seems to be spreading with a more noticeable presence in U.S. Gulf states in recent years. While the brown widow's venom is estimated to be up to twice as strong as the black widow's venom, brown widows typically only inject a minimal amount of venom when they bite. This is an example of how venom toxicity is just one factor that determines a spider's deadliness. In many cases, a brown widow bite hurts and leaves a mark, much like a common household spider. Severe symptoms are possible, and there's at least one documented case of a patient requiring hospitalization. But unless side effects extend beyond mildly inconvenient redness and discomfort, experts recommend washing and icing the wound and applying an anti-itch cream. It should go away on its own, but any signs of infection such as swelling, pus, or warmth to the touch indicate that it's time to seek professional care. Redback Spider Redback spiders are native to Australia and are closely related to black widows. They're extremely versatile and can survive anywhere outside their indigenous habitat, so long as their basic needs such as warmth, adequate food, and a sheltered place for a web are available. This species has an especially noticeable presence in urban and populated areas. Bites are somewhat common, especially during the summer. While it's in the redback spider's custom to play dead when threatened rather than respond aggressively, one will resort to such measures when necessary, especially a female defending her eggs. Redback spiders also often bite when a human unintentionally comes into contact with one, which often happens when they're getting dressed or putting their shoes on. Around 250 bite cases are treated in Australia annually. While many require medical attention, a handful of others presumably go unreported. In fact, only an estimated 10 to 20 percent of bites are envenomated. While the redback spider's venom can cause serious injury and in extreme cases death, the severity of symptoms depends on the amount of venom injected, which the spider has direct control over. Bite symptoms include pain, obviously, which is often worsening or severe, sweating, especially at the site, vomiting, nausea, swollen lymph nodes, and muscular weakness. As torturous as these side effects sound, on the bright side, no deaths have occurred since the introduction of the anti-venom. At the same time, the anti-venom's effectiveness is a topic of contentious debate among researchers, so it's hard to say. Just best not to get bitten.
Brown Recluse Spider Infamous for its venomous and painful bite, the brown recluse spider is common throughout the South and Central United States. Unlike most spiders who have eight eyes, the brown recluse has six uniquely shaped eyes. The uniformly colored velvety species measures just three-eighths of an inch on average. It gets its name from its elusive and nocturnal nature, which entails avoiding humans as much as possible. The brown recluse, like many other spiders, usually only bites in response to a perceived threat, and it's entirely possible to trigger one without needing to. Bites are highly venomous and should be treated with emergency medical care, according to the National Institute of Health. There is no anti-venom, but most bites will heal just fine without medical attention or scarring. Symptoms vary depending on the amount of venom injected and the victim's sensitivity to it and may include chills, nausea, fever, itching, sweating, and general discomfort. Not great. Reactions can be immediate, delayed, or for a lucky few, completely absent. Less fortunate individuals may experience blistering, lesions, and even volcano lesions, which are open wounds that have become gangrenous and which grow as large as a human hand. The ideal response to a bite is to wash it and get to the ER, just in case your side effects fall into the unfavorable end of the spectrum. Chilean Recluse Spider The Chilean recluse spider is native to South America, dwelling primarily in Peru, Chile, Ecuador, Brazil, Argentina, and Uruguay. This species is also sometimes seen in Mexico and the U.S. It's perhaps the most dangerous spider within its genus, despite measuring a mere 8 to 30 millimeters. It's also called the corner spider since it tends to hide in difficult-to-access spaces, like within cracks and behind or underneath furniture. It's said that up to half of all Chilean households host at least one of these pesky and potentially harmful intruders. The Chilean recluse spider is active year-round, but tends to come out more during hotter weather, often prompting experts to warn the public to be cautious. In late 2018, the spider made headlines for seriously injuring a 16-year-old Chilean girl who ended up in the hospital. People are most likely to fall victim by unintentionally encountering a Chilean recluse spider, for example by reaching into a dark closet where one has taken up headquarters. The skin blisters and swells immediately following a bite. Over the following hours, the victim can expect their pain to worsen, for the bite to become itchy and for a dark spot to form on the site. While only an estimated 3% of cases are fatal, experts warn people to err on the safe side by checking for spiders before sticking their hand or foot into a dark space. But if worse comes to worse and a Chilean recluse bites, it's recommended to clean the wound, apply ice, and get to an emergency room. Six-Eyed Sand Spider The medium-sized six-eyed sand spider dwells in deserts and sandy environments throughout southern Africa. It measures between 1 and 2 inches long and has a leg span of around 4 inches. This species is related to recluse spiders, which are distributed worldwide, and several African and South American species. Its flattened stance and lateral moving legs have also earned it the nickname of the six-eyed crab spider. This creature is covered in small hairs called setae, which help to camouflage it by holding particles of sand. The six-eyed sand spider is possibly the world's most venomous spider. According to toxicology studies, it contains a hemolytic component which ruptures red blood cells and causes a necrotic effect, meaning it destroys tissue. There is no anti-venom, meaning this spider's bite is more likely to be lethal than many other species, but nobody knows for sure because there are no confirmed records of human bites. There are two suspected cases, one which resulted in the amputation of a man's arm due to severe necrosis, and another where the victim bled to death. The good news is that the six-eyed sand spider is pretty shy and rarely comes into contact with humans. When it does, it doesn't always bite. And when it bites, it doesn't always release a large amount of venom, or any at all. Australian Funnel Web Spiders The Australian Funnel Web family of spiders consists of 40 known species and is named after their peculiar tube-shaped webs. While some species are presumed to be harmless, others possess potent and fast-acting venom and rank among the world's most dangerous spiders. Perhaps the deadliest family member is the Sydney funnel web spider, which lives in various bushland and suburban environments along Australia's east coast. It looks terrifying, with its rear-facing fangs that are sharp enough to cut through fingernails and a relatively large body size. This nocturnal creature hides out during the day, which is why it's somewhat common for people to find one camping in their shoe or in a dark corner of their home. 
In fact, its proximity to humans is one of the major reasons it's considered so dangerous. The Sydney funnel web spider is both highly venomous and aggressive. It's likely the culprit behind all serious funnel web spider bites and the 13 recorded deaths that resulted from the bites between 1927 and 1980. The spider's venom contains an ultratoxin protein, which severely affects the nervous system and can kill a human within 15 minutes. Bite symptoms include rapid heart rate, difficulty breathing, and numbness around the mouth. While the funnel web spider did not evolve specifically to attack humans, its venom is particularly effective on primates and invertebrates, something Dr. Robert Raven, curator of arachnids at Queensland Museum, calls an evolutionary accident. The good news is that household pets recover from bites quickly and safely, and luckily for humans, an anti-venom was introduced in 1981, and there have been no known fatalities since. Thanks for watching! Which spider scares you the most? Have you ever been bitten by a spider? Let me know in the comments below, and remember to subscribe if you haven't already! See you later! Bye!